I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about inspiration, jQuery knobs, design principles, and more. Let's check it out. First up is this wonderful website called Call to Idea. In the biz, we call that CTI. It's just like Call to Action, CTA. No, that's, that's totally a complete lie. But they do have these really cool components here, and they call them components. I would call them design patterns, though. You can click on any one of these, such as logins, and you can see lots of examples of login windows. So this is basically a pattern library, and it loaded in all of those images there. It looked like they probably could have used some lazy loading. Ooh, mm, go check pattern. out the previous episode of the Treehouse Show for more info on that. Hey, hey. And they have lots of examples of login windows. So let's click on another one, maybe tabs. And we're going to load in 8 million images here. Oh, really got to keep tabs on these to see when they're loading. And then once they're all loaded, well, you can look at lots of different design patterns for tabs. So, so this is all about inspiration, right? Exactly. It's when I a, need inspiration, I just look at a picture of you. Wow, that's really sweet, Jason. That's actually a nice thing. It's what we talked about, compliments. I know. No, we're working on it. But anyway, if you're designing a website, which if you're watching this show, you probably are. But like not while you're watching the show. Right, you yeah, gotta, you gotta watch don't want to multitask. And then you gotta focus 100%. Then this is probably pretty useful. You can look at different pieces of inspiration for all sorts of different design patterns. So you can say, hey, I gotta solve this problem. I bet somebody else has already solved it. And you can check here and figure it out. Get inspired. Did you see all those sections on there? See that on the bottom? There's one under profiles. Wizards, do you think we're in there? I don't know. Wizards? No. Hmm. Mm. We'll submit a pull request, I guess. Yeah, different kind of different kind of which what about under players? No. No, I hate that. Oh, okay. I hate all those. No, not not under players either. Okay. Weird. I was thinking of something else. Next up, we have a jQuery plugin called jQuery Knob. This gives you touch and mouse, wheel, and keyboard sensitive events for knobs. So here, let's go ahead and check this out over on the left. See this, this little knob right here? I can grab that with the mouse, and as I move it around, you can see that Whoa. it does a complete turn and revolution and fills up. Now, this will also work with touch events or... or keyboard or scrolling even. I'm just scrolling right now. See how the mouse remains stationary? That's just that's just me scrolling. I know it appears like I'm doing a lot more there, but no, that's it. Now there are a bunch of different options. You can see that in cursor mode, it will increase the value in the center and they are controlling it with these different data attributes to get a little dial here. So this one goes from 76 to negative 54. Oh wow, look at this, 100 all the way down, boom. Wow. And then you can also display the previous value if you want to. Totally up to you. We're not the boss of you. You know, you do you do what you want to do. So anyway, got a bunch of different things that you can do here. Angles, offset and arcs, five digit values with a thousand steps. That's like a lot of wow, steps. Wow, it's like a thermostat for like the sun or something. Yeah. Jeez, wow. That's pretty cool. That temperature in Kelvin? Mm. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, check this out. An unreadable futuristic clock. You can do that on a web page if you want to. What time is it? It's time to go to the next segment. Next up, we have this wonderful blog post, I guess you could call it, it or maybe it's a, a library. I don't know. It's, it's, it's the internet. And it's a bunch of design principles. Design principles, huh? Yeah, design principles. And you can click here to start reading, or if you just want an overview of the major sections, you can scroll down here. So there's axis, symmetry, hierarchy, and rhythm. So let's just let's just click on let's click on rhythm here. Let's click on one of these. And this is going to tell you all about rhythm in design. So rhythm is the movement created by a repeated pattern of forms. Now, here's the first one, pattern. So it says, the best way to understand rhythm is to think of a song. Songs have rhythm 
And when a piece of the song repeats, well, that's basically what you have here in design. When a piece of the design repeats over and over again. So that's sort of a basic definition of rhythm. And then in between, you have different breaks. So it says a break in rhythm will appear more hierarchical. Uh, so thinking about a song again, when the rhythm is broken, uh, something quite special usually happens. So right here, that lets you know that, well, that's a maybe special part of the design, and that's where things get broken up. So anyway, there's a couple of other sections here for design principles, and if you're familiar with the uh, principles or elements of design, this is going to be pretty analogous to that. So if you're maybe a developer and you're not too confident in your design abilities, definitely be sure to check this one out. Next up, we have a project called accounting.js. This is a small JavaScript library with no dependencies that lets you format numbers, money, and currency. This supports full localization and has zero dependencies. So let's go ahead and check out the demo right here. Now, the nice thing about this library is that you can give it this format money method, and then you can also pass it the symbol, the different separators, and customize all that. So you give it any number, and boom, you get currency formatting right out of the box. Now, you can format the symbols. Uh, you can also pass in values, symbols, anything like that. So it uh, gives you a bunch of different options for formatting. You can give it fixed rounding for floating point numbers if you pass in a floating point number. Now, uh, you know, depends on how uh, specific you want to be with your currency formatting. People might get a little bit upset if you're just rounding up or down their money. So something to keep in mind if you are using this library. And you can also unformat a currency string in case you want the actual uh, number of money instead. So that is about it. It works really well with money.js and the open exchange rates if you're doing something like converting currencies. Anyway, very, very easy to use. Check that out. We'll have a link in the show notes right below this video. Wow, that is that is so money. Oh, that's a, that's a good pun. I stopped accounting those earlier. Can always count on you for puns. Next up, we have this wonderful blog post over on CSS Tricks by Chris Coyer, and it's called Dropdown Menus with More Forgiving Mouse Movement Paths. Well, that sounds a little bit complicated. What the heck is he talking about? No idea. Well, when you use a dropdown menu, oftentimes a website will require you to follow a mouse path that looks like this. So here's the game plan. We're going to come over here going to hover over this drop-down menu, and we're going to come down here and go straight across, and then you'll come down to the menu item. Is this a treasure map or a drop-down menu? It is. It is a game plan. So right here is a mouse movement pattern that users might take some time, and they'll go over to the drop-down menu, they'll come over to this thing, and then when they go to a sub-item, they will cross over this little corner here and up. Oh, Oh, it's gone. The menu will disappear because they actually hit right here with their mouse. Well, how do you fix that? That's exactly what this article explores. There's a couple of different approaches. And actually on CodePen, Chris took a pretty basic approach, but it seems to be pretty effective. I haven't had any problems with their menus. Definitely be sure to check them out. It's a CSS-based approach. So you hover over a menu item here. And he's using pseudo elements before and after, and they're sized as such. They're colored in red here. So if you come down to a menu item and you say, ah, that is the menu that I need, you can just go whoosh and hover your mouse over maybe the help or the asset manager here, and you'll be just fine because your mouse actually will be hovering over this pseudo element. So that is one approach. Now, there's a couple of others listed in this article. They are pretty cool. One of my favorites, though, is something that Amazon did, and they have this crazy JavaScript-driven triangle. So they don't actually render this, but when you hover over an item, 
it will create this invisible triangle and if you move your mouse at I think a certain speed you'll still be okay it'll keep that menu up so pretty impressive stuff and something that solves a really annoying problem with a lot of drop-down menus but this actually makes drop-down menus on the web at least pretty useful mm -hmm. So that's about all we have time for this week. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talked, out, talked about, check out the show notes right below this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.